Are you giving your clients the dignity and respect that they deserve? Are you helping them to exercise choice? Well, let's find out. Hi, I'm Donna from Culturally Directed Care Solutions, where we give you the knowledge and tools to help you provide quality care with confidence. If you're new here, consider subscribing so you can keep up to date with the latest industry, uh, about the latest industry reforms and aged care practices. Today, we are looking at the first of the aged care standards, which all the other standards revolve around. This first standard is about the me, the person at the centre of the care and support, the person getting help from you and your organisation. If you look at the visual picture of the standards, it's the person, your clients, who are at the centre of what you and your service does. Now let's think about this as if you were the consumer or the client. The consumer outcome for Standard 1 states, I am treated with dignity and respect and can maintain my identity. I can make informed choices about my care and services and live the life that I choose. Now try putting yourself in an elderly person's shoes. If you were in hospital or living in an aged care home and needed to rely on others for care and support, would you like to be seen as an individual, someone who has value, feelings, and with a past and a life of meaning? Would you become frustrated, angry, or fearful if your dignity was compromised, or if people ignored you, or if you were not involved in the decision-making process? For most people, the answer would be a resounding yes. Another key part of this standard is about identity. So what does this mean? All people are shaped by where they have come from, what's happened throughout their lives, the relationships they've had, the group and culture that they have grown up in or been a part of. Our identity is shaped by what we believe in, our language, family and community connections, gender and sexual orientation. It's also about our social, religious, cultural and spiritual beliefs. We are all diverse, unique and different in many ways. This standard is also about respect. So what does that mean in the context of service provision? When you Google the term respect, there are a lot of descriptors that come up. For example, being courteous, sensitive, caring, behaving in a way that we would expect to be treated ourselves and treating people with dignity and as individuals. How do you and your team do this? Are you and your team aware of a person's cultural background, mindful of their likes and dislikes? Are you matching your staff to clients? And are your staff aware of and supporting an individual's needs and preferences? Do you also help them to make informed choices? This means that the person has enough information to help make the choice that's right for them. And do your resources clearly describe services and supports in a way that's accessible to the consumer? Are they written in plain English or translated into language? Do you help people to understand the care and support you provide, like using interpreters or cultural brokers where this is needed? Are people encouraged to ask questions about and direct the care that they want? And what about dignity? Now, most of us have been in hospital at one time or another, or have had a family member or friend in hospital. Would you like to be wheeled through an emergency ward with nothing on but a flappy gown to have everyone gawking at you? No, I'm sure you wouldn't. The same goes for someone needing personal care. One of the most challenging things that we face as we get older is a sense of losing control, of not being able to do the things that we used to do. So we need to be mindful that our clients, like all of us, want to retain as much independence and dignity as possible. So what might this look like in your service? Maybe it's a friendly atmosphere, one where people are polite and caring, where staff take the time to talk and listen to the person. Maybe it's about the staff knocking on their door and waiting. And if the person has concerns, there is someone who will listen and be happy to help them. And what about risk? And how does this fit in with choice, safety and control? While we want to minimise risk, especially to vulnerable clients, don't we all face and accept risk each and every day? 
It's something we consider every time we decide on a course of action and we weigh up, often subconsciously, the pros and the cons. There's risk in driving a car, crossing the road, jumping in a swimming pool, getting on a push bike, or lining up to do a stand and skydive. Dignity of risk respects a person's wishes to do something that may have negative consequences. It's about the person being able to make informed decisions of their choosing. It can also mean outlining respectfully where you and your service may be able to support them and where you may not. Standard one is all about remembering that the person is still a person. They are just older. Next time, we'll cover standard two, which is about helping client to identify their needs, goals and preferences, getting the care and support that helps them to live the life that they choose.